Besides some small islands round about Britain, there is also a large island, which stretches parallel to Britain on the north, its breadth being greater than its length. Concerning this island I have nothing certain to tell, except that its inhabitants are more savage than the Britons, since they are man-eaters as well as heavy eaters, and since further they count it an honourable thing when their fathers die to devour them, and openly have intercourse not only with the other women, but also with their mothers and sisters. But I am saying this only with the understanding that I have no trustworthy witnesses for it, and yet, as for the matter of man-eating, that is said to be a custom of the Scythians, and in cases of necessity forced by sieges, the Celti, the Iberians, and several other peoples are said to have practiced it. Concerning Thule, our historical information is still more uncertain on account of its outside position, for Thule, of all the countries that are named, is set farthest north. Unless that the things which Pythias has told us about Thule, as well as the other places in that part of the world, have indeed been fabricated by him, we have clear evidence from the districts that are known to us, for in most cases he has falsified them, as I have already said before, and hence he is obviously more false concerning the districts which have been placed outside the inhabited world. And yet, if judged by the science of the celestial phenomena and by mathematical theory, he might possibly seem to have made adequate use of the facts as regard the people who live close to the frozen zone, when he says that, of the animals and domesticated fruits, there is an utter dearth of some and a scarcity of the others, and that the people live on millet and other herbs, and on fruit and roots, and where there are grain and honey, the people get their beverage also from them. As for the grain, he says, since they have no pure sunshine, they pound it out in large storehouses, after first gathering in the ears thither. For the threshing floors become useless because of the lack of sunshine, and because of the rains. Pythias, by whom many have been misled, for after asserting that he travelled over the whole of Britain that was accessible, Pythias reported that the coastline of the island was more than 40,000 stadia, and added his story about Thule and about those regions in which there was no longer either land properly so-called, or sea, or air, but a kind of substance concreted from all these elements, resembling a sea lungs. A thing in which, he says, the earth, the sea, and all the elements are held in suspension. And this is a sort of bond to hold it all together, which you can neither walk nor sail upon. Now, as for this thing that resembles the sea lungs, he says that he saw it himself, but that all the rest he tells from hearsay. <laughs> 